going back 20 years in time, the 1999 World Cup, there are a few things which stand out for me in that tournament. Uh, in many ways, it was not a great tournament in terms of contest. Remember, the final became so one-sided that it was, you know, it just didn't seem to hold interest after a while. Uh, Australia completely demolishing Pakistan. Pakistan, who had looked impressive reaching the final, were just not up to it on that day. In fact, the semi-final between Australia and South Africa was melodramatic for the way in, in which South Africa lost a match which they should have won fairly easily. And it, you know, since then, they've acquired this uh, kind of uh, image of being chokers. But India's concerned, it was a very ordinary tournament. Uh, from the performances that one can think of, yes, there was Sachin Tendulkar's century against lowly Kenya. But remember, he was coming back uh, from a personal bereavement. His father had passed away in the course of the tournament. He flew back to India, came back, and then in the next match that he went out, he made a century. And you know, that's that's the kind of script that only a Tendulkar story can, you know, as it as it unfolded over the 25 years that he was playing, uh, only <laughs> he could have managed that. What was quite interesting in the 1999 World Cup where uh, India was concerned was the form of Rahul Dravid. He was the highest scorer for the team. Now, he was somebody who was not easily acknowledged as an ODI player. Remember, he was in this tournament even keeping wickets. Uh, and it took my mind back a few years when uh, the late Raj Singh Dungarpur, who was otherwise such a great fan of Rahul Dravid, uh, thought he, was, he couldn't hit the ball of the square and he shouldn't be playing uh, ODIs. But Rahul proved everybody wrong. The most significant uh, impact of that tournament came from the India-Pakistan match at, uh, at Manchester. This was played in the backdrop of the Kargil conflict. And, you know, the sentiments were so heightened. They were so uh, aggressive on both sides. Fans on both, you know, the polarization was so strong and so pronounced that when I went to the, the ground, uh, you know, it was the feeling of being in a hostile environment was clearly evident. From the time you walked, you know, from wherever you got off from your car or cab or, you know, you walked in, the tension was palpable and the shouting and the sloganeering, etc., etc. Now, India won that match quite comfortably, but it was an experience that I could, I could never forget because I had seen India and Pakistan play each other earlier in bilateral series, in the World Cup in 91, 92, in 96 at Bangalore, where again it was very, very, uh, you know, the, the, the feeling was very strong, the sentiments were very strong, but it was not as hostile as what one witnessed in 99. The last aspect of uh, this tournament, which I, it still fascinates me as to how it even, it even happened, was South Africa. Captain Hansi Cronier and coach Bob Woolmer communicating with each other through a mic, you know, they plugged into each other and talking to each other in the course of a match. And for my, you know, it was unbelievable when I saw it. How was it even allowed? I mean, immediately some action was taken. But A, how did they even think of such a thing? How did they dare to do it? Uh, did they not think there would be objections and repercussions? It's something that absolutely flabbergasts me even now to have thought that the captain and the coach would, because it raises several issues and it, you know, um, without kind of uh, casting aspersions or imputing motives, I think this, you know, the, the authorities need to be a little clear and strong and, uh, you know, where the checks and balances are concerned in the, in the, in the sport. Because nine months later, after this 1999 World Cup, maybe eight or nine months later, Remember, the match-fixing scam broke. And therefore, I think everything should be done to make sure that this sport stays. Uh, there is a certain ethical limit, an ethical barrier, which is not crossed. I thought that Bob Woolmer and Hansi Kroni had crossed that barrier in 1999.